Hey, good optometry morning, Dr. Michael Nelson, your YouTube eye doctor here today. And if you are like any of my patients, you probably don't realize that there are different types of cataracts out there. And so today we're gonna to learn about three things. Number one, what are the different types of cataracts that are out there? What typically causes those cataracts and what you can do about them? And we are starting right now. Okay, so if you wanna know about a specific part of this video, feel free to check out the description down below because it'll have the different sections blocked out. But you can also look at the red progress bar right below here, and that will show you some of the different sections as well. All right, so before we go into the causes of cataracts, it's probably helpful for you to know a little bit about what makes up the crystalline lens and how cataracts are formed. So let's talk about that just for a little bit. So the lens is made up of many, many layers of lens epithelial cells. And then this lens is enclosed inside a thin membrane, which we call the lens capsule. So the lens itself is actually incredibly amazing. And there's actually only two structures in our entire body that are perfectly clear and both of them are on the eye. Number one is a cornea, which is the clear tissue on the front of the eye, but the other clear structure is the crystalline lens that's behind the iris in your eye. All right, so the thing that makes a crystalline lens perfectly clear is that it has very uniformly arranged layers. And so these layers are arranged so exactly and so uniformly that light rays are not altered as they pass through it. And so if there's anything that disrupts this uniform pattern of this lens, and specifically we're talking about kind of denaturing of the proteins of the lens epithelial cells or coagulation of those proteins, or maybe some, some edema or swelling or liquid that gets into the lens, Lens, any of those things is going to disrupt that natural uniform pattern of the lens and that will cause some type of opacity or some type of cloudiness in the lens and any opacity or cloudiness in the natural lens is called a cataract. All right, so we know that there are risk factors that can contribute to causing cataracts. And these are some of the main categories that will cause the risk. So number one is aging or aging factors of the eye. Another common thing that can cause a cataract or cause an increased risk for cataracts is some type of systemic medical condition. So this would include things like diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, things like that. Other things that can contribute to increased risk for cataracts would be lifestyle choices that could cause increased aging. And this is kind of what I mean by aging factors. So, and this would include things like excess exposure to UV light over a lifetime, smoking, and, and excessive alcohol use. Other things that can cause cataracts or increase the risk for cataracts would be some type of previous eye injury or, or trauma to the eye, or some type of inflammation that might happen in the eye, or some type of previous eye surgery. If you have some type of surgery, and this wouldn't be cataract surgery, some other type of eye surgery, that's gonna cause some stress and some mini trauma to the, the lens and could co possibly cause a cataract to develop. And the last main category would be the prolonged use of corticosteroid medications. And this could include using either eye drops or actually taking systemic corticosteroids in high enough doses for a long enough period of time. All right, and so there are five main types of cataracts that might develop in the natural crystalline lens. First of all, we're gonna talk about the most common type of cataract that might develop. And this is the type of cataract that develops in, in kind of through the center or all throughout the entire lens. And we're gonna to refer to this as a nuclear cataract, or sometimes we'll refer to it as a nuclear sclerotic cataract. So like I said, this is the most common type of cataract, and it's the one that develops mostly due to aging. And basically it's a natural clouding or yellowing of the lens as you get a little bit older. Now typically we will start to see signs of this type of cataract developing in the lens in your 40s and 50s, although it might not be affecting your vision. This type of cataract, the nuclear cataract, it typically won't start to affect your vision until you get into your 60s. And often it's in your late 60s, early 70s is when you're having cataract surgery for nuclear cataracts. And so if your grandparents or parents or someone in their 60s or 70s is having cataract surgery, likely it's because of nuclear cataracts. And so this type of cataract develops very, very gradually over years and years and years. And, grad and it develops so slowly that oftentimes people don't notice the changes happening immediately, but they'll be so, so gradual. And basically the lens starts to get a little bit cloudy and then it'll start to get a little bit yellow. And in the advanced stages, it can actually turn a little brownish in color. And sometimes we'll refer to it in the advanced stages as a brunescent cataract. And so the nuclear cataract, the cause of it typically is aging or aging factors. So 
what we do know is if you live long enough, you're probably going to get this type of cataract. But if there are factors in your life that are going to cause you to age earlier, and that's going to include increased exposure to UV light over a lifetime, smoking, increased alcohol use, or things like that that can cause aging to happen faster, then you're more likely to develop a nuclear cataract a little bit earlier. So if you want to know about the symptoms you might get from a nuclear cataract, I've got a whole net of another video that you can watch up here that talks about the symptoms from nuclear cataracts. All right, so the second type of cataract that might develop is a type of cataract that develops on the edges of the lens. And this type of cataract is called a cortical cataract. And so a cortical cataract, it develops from the outside of the lens more towards the center, and it happens on the anterior and the posterior part of the of the lens. And it basically, you develop these kind of radial spokes or kind of white cloudy spokes that radiate in, almost look like spokes of a tire, um, that radiant, radiate in towards the center of the lens. And that's called a cortical cataract. And so as these cortical spokes start to progress towards the center of the vision, when they reach your line of sight, then they will start to affect the vision. So. Oftentimes, as eye doctors, we're going to see some of these cortical cataracts starting to develop long before you will start to notice them affecting your vision. And so we might say, oh yeah, there's some start of cataracts here, but they're not affecting your vision, maybe in a number of years. And these progress rather slowly as you get older. And as they slowly start to progress into the central vision, then they will start to affect your vision. So the main causes of cortical cataracts is probably going to be aging, but it's also been associated with diabetes. And so Aging effects can happen, and probably cortical cataracts, this is probably the second most common cataract that I will typically see next to nuclear cataracts. All right, the third type of cataract that develops is something called a posterior subcapsular cataract. And so this cataract develops on the back of the lens. So the posterior cataract, it starts to develop right in the center of the lens, so right in your line of sight. And so it starts as this very small cloudy little pearls on the back of, of the lens, and then this will start to increase and extend out further and further. So the posterior subcapsular cataract, this type of cataract will often start to affect your vision almost right away. And it can cause rapid changes in your vision, like over even a few months. So Sometimes a patient will come in and they'll st first start to notice maybe some little bit of changes in their vision, a little bit of cloudiness, a little bit more glare. And then a few months later, the vision is suddenly decreased because those opacities on the back of the lens have proliferated and really taken over their line of sight. And so this type of cataract can change quite quickly. So the interesting thing about this type of cataract, because it's right in your line of sight, your vision is gonna be affected more when your pupil gets smaller. So in situations like really bright light, like outdoors, when your pupils get really, really small, you can't really see around this cataract any longer like you might in the evening or dusk hours. And so your vision might be more severely affected. So people with posterior subcapsular cataracts, they'll often comment says, as, wow, I really struggle during really bright days and really bright light. But when the sun goes down in dim light or even at night, it feels like it's a little bit easier to see. So this type of cataract we will often see in younger individuals. And when I say younger, you know, I'll see this in people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. That's often when we'll see this posterior type of cataract develop. It can also be associated with people with diabetes. Um, anyone that's had trauma in their eye, they might have this type of cataract develop. People that are on corticosteroids, like I said, either eye drops or ointments around their eyes that have uh, corticosteroids. And even if you're on some systemic oral steroids in high enough dosages and for long enough periods of time, you can develop this type of cataract. All right, and so the fourth type of cataract that might develop, you guessed it, is the type of cataract that might develop on the anterior portion of the lens. And so these are called anterior capsular cataracts. And so anterior cataracts are a lot less common. This can typically happen if you have some type of ocular trauma, like a shock wave or a force that hits the eye. They can also happen in electrical shock or electrical voltage or in other types of electrical radiation that can affect the eye. They can also happen in certain types of genetic conditions can affect the anterior portion of the lens and develop these cataracts and these opacities in that area. I will often see these type of cataracts in younger patients because there's usually a typical reason why these have developed. They're typically not associated with aging. And the interesting thing about anterior capsular cataracts 
Clinically, I don't find that they affect their vision nearly as much as lenses that affect the central or the back part of the lens. And so oftentimes I'll have patients that'll have this large opacity on the anterior portion of the lens, and, I, and it looks quite dramatic, but it's not affecting their vision all that much, and as a result, they don't require cataract surgery at that point. This type of cataract also doesn't seem to be progressive. They seem to develop, but then they seem to be stable after that point, and they don't typically progress with time. All right, and so the last type of cataract that might develop is the one that you might be born with. And we refer to these cataracts as congenital cataracts. And so I will often categorize these congenital cataracts as kind of two main groups. So there'll typically be a group of congenital cataracts that will affect someone's vision, and then there'll be another group of congenital cataracts that don't really affect the vision. So in those that tend to affect their vision, these are typically going to be due to some type of hereditary, either a genetic type of condition or a genetic condition that affects your chromosomes, or they could develop due to some type of trauma or injury during pregnancy, or if there's some type of infection or infectious condition that develops during pregnancy, those can all cause enough trauma to the fetus and to the eye that cause some type of cataract that makes the lens a little bit cloudy. And so when, you're, when the child is born, You'll notice this opacity. One of the first things that the doctors are doing when they're coming in to look at the newborn is they're looking at the lens and they're seeing, okay, is this lens pretty clear? And if it's clear, great. But if there is some type of cataract that develops that's probably affecting the vision, then often these infants are going to be having cataract surgery done at a young age so they don't develop amblyopia. Now, in the second group of this type of congenital cataract are those that don't typically start to affect their vision. And I would say there's probably two main types that we'll often see. There's a type called a sutural cataract. So when the lens is developing, there's these kind of like little Y-shaped type of sutures in the middle of the lens. And sometimes you can get some opacities on these lens that we call a sutural cataract. Or the other type of cataract that we'll often see is something called a blue dot cataract, or sometimes we refer to it as a cerulean cataract. But basically, you'll see these little kind of blue bluish white hazy patches in the lens. And both of these, the sutural and the blue dot type of cataract, they're quite dramatic when we look at them and they're kind of interesting for the eye doctor to see, but they often don't affect the vision. And because they're not affecting the vision and because they typically don't progress and get any worse, they don't require cataract surgery. So it's mostly something interesting for us to see. And sometimes if you have them, your doctor says, oh, you have some cataracts, but they're not affecting your vision. You don't require surgery. All right, so we're going to go into some of the things that you can do to kind of reduce your risk and prevent cataracts from developing. But before we go there, if you're learning anything new in this video, make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button down below so it tells YouTube the value of this video to others. So what can you do to help reduce the risk and reduce the chance of you developing cataracts at a younger age? So here are the things you can do. Number one, stop smoking. We know smoking is definitely an increased factor for developing cataracts. So if you stop smoking, that's going to reduce your risk of developing cataracts. Number two, manage your health conditions. So if you have systemic health conditions, things like diabetes or high blood pressure, try to get those under control because we know those health conditions can cause stress on your body and stress in your system and can cause you to develop cataracts a little bit sooner than you would otherwise. On, on that same vein of being healthy, what you want to do is you want to make sure you live a healthy lifestyle and have a healthy diet rich in lots of antioxidants, fruits and vegetables that can help make sure that your body is as, as healthy as it can be to help reduce those aging effects on the eye. In addition, you can also wear sunglasses. Protecting yourself from UV light over a lifetime can help reduce your risk of cataracts. Now, unfortunately, the most important time to protect yourself against UV light is when you're younger. So if you're in your 60s or 70s or already starting to develop cataracts, make sure you do that because it can help reduce your risk and maybe reduce your risk for developing macular degeneration. But for those of you that are younger in your teens and early 20s, make sure you develop habits to protect yourself from UV exposure over your lifetime, whether that's wearing a hat, wearing sunglasses, just protecting so you don't get exposed to as much UV light. Another thing that you can do to reduce your risk of developing cataracts is reduce the amount of alcohol intake. We know that Excess use of alcohol can cause increased amount of cataracts. So if you're reducing that lifestyle choice, then that will help reduce the risk of developing cataracts at a younger age. Now, as far as treatments like eye drops and things that, that, can, that can prevent or slow down the developing of, of cataracts, there's lots of research going into that. They're trying to develop some different medications and treatments to try to slow down or maybe even reverse the development of cataracts, but they don't have anything quite yet. There are a lot of animal models where they're investigating treatments that can help 
reverse or slow down cataract, but they haven't found a way that that could be used in living humans up to this point. But stay tuned, hopefully we'll have something in the future that might help reduce the development of cataracts. Okay, so hopefully you learned a few things about the causes and the types of cataracts and some of the things you can do about them. If you wanna learn a little bit more about cataracts, I got some more videos along the side here. Be sure to listen to those. And with that, have a great optometry day.